Okay, so your BMI may be lying to you. Uh, I am Dr. Scott Bland. I am a board certified family medicine and obesity medicine physician here in the United States. And we are gonna talk about the potential inaccuracies of BMI. Now I have to also throw in an initial apology here because I spent years of my life telling people that, eh, you know, there may be some hit or miss, whatever, but your BMI uh, is probably right. And I still think to a certain degree that may be true, but I was probably underestimating the likelihood uh, that the BMI could be inaccurately diagnosing people um, as having obesity, the disease of obesity. So I came across a, a kind of a almost hidden chart inside a study, I'm gonna link that below. And this study actually took folks who they had a scale height and weight calculated BMI and who had also gone through a DEXA scan, a body composition scan, where they knew for all of these people, they knew specifically what their uh, scale, height, and weight BMI calculation was, and where that classification put them in terms of uh, obesity or not obesity. And then they took a DEXA scan, which literally takes a picture and, and tells you, hey, this percent of your body is fat tissue. And so it is considered the gold standard of body composition and diagnosing obesity. Um, and so they compared these two and said like, well, how often is BMI right? And I think that is an important thing to know because I think a lot of us have sp also spent portions of our life telling ourselves, um, well, um, I, the scale may say obesity, but it's probably because I'm carrying a, you know, a decent amount of muscle mass or something. I'm pretty stronger than everybody else. You know, I'm built thick or something. Um, and to, in some cases that may be true. And as we go through these studies here, you might find in some cases it's less likely to be true. So let's go ahead and kind of go through this thing here. I've got my computer in my lap here. And I'm gonna be kind of clicking through things, but I'm gonna put these uh, things on the screen. Um, and the thing that I think that is important to realize first is when you're going through a study, it is important to understand um, is what this study talking about relevant to my life? Does it kind of pass the smell test? And so everything should have some degree of skepticism. I like asking questions. Um, and I think that that is an important thing to do. I don't think uh, questions are unfair, um, ask them. So if you've got questions about this, please put them below and we can kind of talk through some of them. So one of the things that I first noticed here, and I'll put it up on the screen, is that when you looked at this, it said that the percent of people who by BMI were classified as obesity was 26%. Now, um, that may be a thing that kind of blows by most people, but I happen to know from just paying attention in the obesity medicine universe that it seems like the prevalence of obesity is a, a higher than that, right? Um, and by many counts, I thought it was in the 40 to 50% range, just kind of off the top of my head. And so I said, that's, that's kind of odd. Why is it so much lower here? What's going on? And so then what you do is you go to the actual source study, you know, the problem with taking um, your... Um, research study results by news headlines is not doing that. So you go to the actual source uh, material and I go through the source material and I find I find that um, that there's an issue here because all of these people were from a multi-specialty practice group in Manhattan um, in between 1998 and 2009, okay? So a 10 year window, but these were people in Manhattan. So you kind of wonder, well, like, does Manhattan accurately reflect the weight distribution of the rest of the country. So then I had to go back and look at actual statistics to say, is my memory of the national prevalence of obesity correct, right? So then I go and I look at the national obesity prevalence is uh, in the 40s, okay? So I was actually correct there, right? In the 40s is the you know average adults walking around this country um, is uh, in the 40s, right? And now this was actually from about 10 years after the window that was coming from that study. So then I had to think like, well, can I find a way of showing that the average person in Manhattan might have been just beyond the difference of 10 years, right? Might have been, uh, you know, maybe thinner. Maybe that's what's going on. So then I go to the New York City uh, statistics. Half of adult New Yorkers were either overweight, 34%, or in the classification of obesity, 22%. So they were currently calling right now um, obesity uh, diagnosis 22% of adults in New York, which is a lot closer to the Manhattan uh, study talking about 26% of folks were diagnosed with obesity. So that kind of like settled that for me a little bit and kind of helped me understand, well, why is this number so off? Um, so then I began to move forward and let's kind of break down the different um, categories. And they did this by gender. And then what they did is they showed if your BMI says you are a not diagnosed with obesity male, um, then how 
what is the likelihood that it is a correct buy when compared to the body fat percentage of a DEXA scan, right? So let's kind of break that down. We're going to start there with folks diagnosed as not obesity uh, by, the, uh, by, the, by the BMI height weight calculations that they do. And so it says here that if the scale height and weight tells you that you are not suffering from obesity as a male, um, that you, it is 72% likely to be right when you do the math there. Um, and that is an interesting thing to me um, because I, I would have thought that if the scale said not obese, that there would be very little chance that a male would be um, qualified as obesity, right? So the, the thing there is if you're in a non-obesity status by height and weight, but you are in obesity status by your DEXA scan, where's the difference coming up? And the thing there would be the amount of muscle mass that you have is going to is going to be considered substandard to or at least not adequate. So your total body standing on a scale doesn't qualify as obesity. But because you have a decreased muscle mass, the amount of on the scale, the amount of you standing on the scale that is fat tissue is high enough to still qualify as a diagnosis of obesity. Now I want to be clear. I say that without any judgment, okay? I'm in the middle of my 1,000 calorie a day for 30-day trial. I am now on day, see, 15 was Sunday. So I am day 17 right now. And when I did my initial weigh-in, and I actually did body composition scanning as well, um, the BMI calculation for me put me at 28 and change. And so that qualified me as an overweight diagnosis, right? Um, but when it broke out my fat tissue, um, my, my actual body composition, my body composition put me in the obesity status, right? It really did. So I think that the issue there is it showed that I was not carrying as much muscle mass, uh, as I thought I might have been, which is kind of obvious because I'm somewhat pear shaped when I, when I start to gain weight, it tends to gather around my, my stomach area. Um, and so, you know, that, uh, that wasn't horribly surprising to me. Um, but uh, it, that, that to me would be the status. Now, you would often call that like a sarcopenic obesity. So the classic for this would be as we get older, sarcopenia, really more specifically muscle wasting when you get older, but muscle wasting in general, um, as we get older, or if you just are living a somewhat sedentary lifestyle, maybe you don't have muscle mass because you're not doing much things, many physical things in your life. Uh, you, you may be a little more on the frail side, but you still have, you know, kind of, you know, you've got some fat tissue around you. And so your, your weight looks somewhat normal if you're just standing there wearing a, you know, a suit or something like that. But if someone's to break down how much of you is actually muscle, um, they find out that there's a lot more uh, fat mass by percentage than would qualify for not obesity. So 72% right if the BMI height weight calculation tells a male that they are not qualified as obesity, okay? Then we go down to uh, females and it's only 35% accurate if it tells a female that they do not qualify as obesity. And that part I thought was pretty interesting there because there was a big difference there. And so I started to think through that. And one of the things to, to understand is when you do height, weight, um, BMI calculations, those are gender neutral. They, there is no accommodation for gender. And I think that if we think about the propensity to build muscle mass, which is dramatically different in males than it is in females, but BMI doesn't give any accommodation for that. But then if you go over to the body fat percentage area, um, they actually do have uh, accommodations for that as well. And women get an extra an extra five points there, right? So I'm not 100% particularly sure. The only thing I can think of is if you're looking at a BMI calculation and like, is that an accurate reflection of the diagnosis of obesity, um, the the lessened ability for females to to gain and form muscle mass uh, to me and bone density for weight and all that sort of stuff um, would probably be the, the leading factor that I would guess right and that's just kind of snapshot talking off the th talking off the hip uh, if you have a different opinion below put it put it down I'd love to hear it and we can kind of talk through that a little bit but um, thirty five percent accurate so if the scale said scale height and weight said uh, BMI does not diagnose as obesity thirty five percent likelihood that the body fat percentage would agree with that. And otherwise, uh, otherwise, more than half, likely, more than half of this by this study of folks who the scale says height and weight is not obesity, if they did a body fat percentage and you're a female, that the body fat percentage would actually diagnose you as uh, having obesity as a disease. So that I thought was, was a big shift there because you're going from 72% accurate with the males to 35% accurate with the females. So then I went to, well, like, what would it be different if we're talking about folks who the BMI scale does say obesity on it? 
And this, I think, is where a lot of us are, where, um, because frankly, our doctors don't tend to talk to us about body composition generally if our BMI scale says uh, not obesity, maybe mildly overweight or, you know, normal healthy weight. Um, what if the BMI scale says um, obesity is a diagnosis? How accurate is that? And it turns out in men, 88% accurate. And I think that that is probably the classification where I would have been, where classically I've been telling myself, ah, it's probably not that, it probably just got some muscle or something like that. And that really just wasn't the case, you know, for me. Uh, you know, when you look at the cold hard numbers, it's hard to, to lie to yourself. Now, there are some people who absolutely, um, because, you know, look, 12%, uh, who absolutely are diagnosed as obesity by height and weight scale, but you look at them and they're 10% body fat. There's, there, there's, there's no way, right? So, you know, you look at some of these NFL players, if you are 220 with a six pack abs, um, you, you are probably diagnosed as obesity by BMI scale, uh, but by body fat percentage, you know, you just look at yourself and be like, there's just no way, right? And a body composition is a great way to have some objective backing of that. But there are absolutely some people who just, hey, you have more muscle. Um, I am in the National Guard and I have met a few people who just look like they fell off a G.I. Joe cartoon and they are just, just jacked and huge, muscular, strong, physical specimen people and, you know, they just look like they got carved out of stone. Um, they, they never, ever pass weight. They never pass weight. And, you know, the, the presumed uh, healthy weight that the Army has you do, which is a very simplistic thing. But when it comes to tape time, because you're measuring, like, you know, their actual body dimensions, uh, pass every time without even thinking about it, because they are just literal machines. Uh, it just turns out that's not as many of us as prob probably we like to tell ourselves, right? So then the next one that, that got me really kind of confused, again, thinking back to the difference between male and female concordance between the body fat percentage and the BMI scales earlier, um, was when a female was diagnosed as having obesity by the BMI calculation of height versus weight. According to this study, and this was, this was two, over 200 people, 100% um, accuracy for diagnosis of obesity by body fat percentage. Um, that I thought was almost definitely leaning towards the notion of, um, women have a, a females have a, have a specifically different ability to build and gain muscle mass. And so if you think about the numbers, height versus weight that it takes to get into what, what a classification of, of obesity would be, it would be very, very difficult for, for most females to get there with using muscle mass, right? Um, now, if you are a high-end athlete, performance athlete, that's fine. Um, you know, this was not a cohort of high-end performance athletes. This was a cohort of average people walking around Manhattan, right? And so there are certainly some people who would have a BMI calculation of obesity, who are female, who that when they did body fat percentage, would be like, hey man, you, um, you have six-pack six abs and you're just a, a solid truck of muscle, totally makes sense. Um, you know, some of the competitive CrossFitters, I think of specifically, they're just, they're just very muscular and they clearly do not have a lot of body fat. They would probably not have any issues with a body fat percentage in terms of going near an obesity diagnosis. But the average human female walking around Manhattan, at least during that time, um, if the height weight scale said obesity, the uh, diagnosis of obesity would almost 100% uh, be backed up by a body fat composition. So I thought this was actually a really interesting thing because despite all of the, um, you know, the, the hubbub about why are we using BMI if uh, we don't necessarily have this great faith in it and we think the other stuff might be better. Um, and I hadn't seen an, a great study about it lately. I'm sure there were others out there. I just hadn't come across them. But to me, why are we still using BMI? Frankly, because it's cheap height, weight, every single doctor's office has a scale. Um, almost anybody can do a BMI calculation with, uh, with an iPhone and a scale in their bathroom in about two minutes. And it's super easy. Um, you get into body compositions. Um, some of the, even the, the cheaper ones can cost thousands of dollars to buy. And so the average person isn't getting access to that. Um, even in the army, we don't do body composition in the real way of DEXA scans or you know electrical impedance or anything like that. If somebody doesn't make the actual height, weight type tables, we go to tape. And we literally just tape around different parts of their body and run some math. And that's what we call it because tape is cheap. Uh, you know, a tape, a tape and, you know, somebody's time to do the math is cheaper than, than putting a body composition scanner at every single uh, drill hall in the country. So there is some limits to BMI. It is convenient and cheap and to varying degrees, it is um, either accurate or, or less accurate 
depending on your gender and depending on your diagnosis of obesity by the height and weight calculations of the scale. So that I thought was an interesting breakdown. You may have some opinions on how some of these things broke out, limitations of the study. Again, I would love to talk to them uh, with you below, but this is uh, my breakdown of why I think BMI is potentially more useful in certain areas than others. And depending on your demographics and where you think you end up on the obesity or not obesity diagnosis by terms of your height, weight, scale, um, you know, maybe this in, enlightens your desire to potentially go get a composition scan. So hopefully that was helpful to you. And I hope you guys have a nice day.